Generative neural networks have really taken AI by storm and really generative AI in the world of 2023. Now we're going to start to take a look at generative AI and PyTorch. And really, generative AI ushered in the current trend of deep learning. Back in 2006, when Jeffrey Hinton introduced a paper on deep belief neural networks, a fast learning technique for deep belief neural network. And that that for me is when I really started to see generative neural networks that that generate data and not always exactly the same data like the regression and classification neural networks that we would see that would just generate a prediction. They would generate, in the case of Jeffrey Hinton's original article or paper, they would generate digits and even do some predictions on the digits. But they would learn based on the minced data set, these classic digits that you've probably seen a million times in artificial intelligence tutorials. The Deep belief neural networks were able to actually generate new digits that were very similar to these handwritten digits that the neural networks were trained on. And this really ushered in generative AI becoming a lot more mainstream. The next critical step was some research done by Ian Lundfeld, who showed that you could do something called a GAN, a generative adversarial neural network. That's where you would have one neural network attempting to learn to create some sort of new image type. It could be the digits like we had in the belief neural networks could generate. But Ian started actually generating faces from this. This These very ghost-like faces that you see here were generated by the a neural network, one that detects whether a face is fake or not, and the other that learns to generate. And these two neural networks work together in an adversarial way and could generate faces. These are not real, actual people. And Ian really uh, introduced the GAN, and GANs have been used for all sorts of synthetic data applications where they create new data based on original data. Then NVIDIA went and took this just totally to the next level where they introduced StyleGAN. And StyleGAN is able to generate faces that an endless, virtually endless supply of them, as you feed in random seeds, it generates faces like this. And there's a whole range as you modify these latent vectors that make up the, the GAN faces. Stable diffusion is one of the new areas of image-based generative AI. And here, I can generate not just faces, but different poses of the individual. You'll notice these four. This is all the same lady, or at least close to the same lady. There's no guarantee that it is the same person because it's not a person. These were all generated by Stable Diffusion using a realistic model that was trained on it. We'll, we'll learn about several different model types that you can use in Stable Diffusion. But here, I'm able to describe her in very, very detailed positive and negative prompts and use a advanced model that was pre-trained to generate realistic-looking people. You might use a different model if you were trying to create maybe anime characters or something like that. GPT and ChatGPT and, uh, and also uh, Llama, Alpaca. All of these large language models, which are generative, that's another aspect where generative AI has very much taken the world by storm. So the next couple of parts of this section of my course, we're going to focus specifically on image-based generative AI. We just got done with the large language models. So I'll refer back to those videos if you'd like more information on this other area of generative AI. But let's get into creating images with PyTorch.